Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to take a look at rounding and estimating, figuring out if a number is closer to one thing or another, and what's in between. Let's get started. So here's what you can expect to find in this lesson. We're going to talk about place values, looking at numbers inside of a range of other numbers. We'll be doing some rounding, and then we'll use some estimations in some practical real world situations and one actually um, and give you some ideas of where you might find them. So let's get started. Place values. Here is a number 15,673.248 and that number we're going to use to talk about place values. First off I'm going to move from left to right. My place value here the one is in the 10,000s column. That's the place value. So that represents 1 10,000. A quick way to remember that is to maybe just write that number and fill everything out with zeros. That'll tell you exactly what it is. 10,000. That's the location. Okay, the place value is the 10,000s column. In this case, it is 1 10,000. But in the next case, the 5 there in the thousands column, you can't remember that as the 5,000s. So here's how I would do that. I would put a 1 there, fill in zeros for everything else, and that will tell me that this is the thousands column. Notice that if you look at that number, it's a 1,000, 1,000, point zero zero zero. That's the thousand column. This one would be the hundreds column. There are six 100s in this group. Then we have the tens. There are seven tens. Again. Writing it in there is a helpful way to sort of see what it is. And then we have our ones or our units right there. So those are the place values on the left of the decimal, the first five at least, the ten thousands, thousands, hundreds, tens, and ones, or the units. On the right of the decimal, we start getting some things that are a little bit different. Um, Let's take a look. The first number, we call this the tenths, with that TH on the end, tenths. It is one tenth. Okay, in this case, we have two tenths. Um, you see that though, tenth, tenth. And so, a way that you could do this is to write it out in the form of money, right? If that was a one, then it would be ten cents. So, it's a tenth. This would be hundredths. So if there was one of that, it would be one cent, one out of 100, or one hundredth of a dollar. All right, that's the hundredths column, and then we have the thousandths column. Notice that these kind of, they center around the units or the ones, and then they kind of have this a similar name moving outward. The tens are one space to the left, and then you've got the tenths, one space to the right of the units and then they keep moving out. And this pattern will continue beyond. So if you had another number on the right of the decimal, it would be the ten thousandths. All right, so those are the place values. And it's important to know what the place values are because we are going to use that moving forward. Speaking of which, let's move forward. We have numbers now, and we have to figure out where they fit. So 359, where does it fit inside of these groups of numbers? Well, it doesn't fit between 200 and 300, or between 102 and 103, but it fits right there between 100 or 350 and 360. Let's go down to the, the 102.4. That fits between 102 and 103. See that? It's in between 102 and 103. We also have 15 that fits between 10 and 20. And 235 fits between 200 and 300. Being able to identify where numbers fit in between different groups is a really good first step for rounding. Speaking of which, let's talk about the steps for rounding. First, we're going to do basically this. We're going to find the place value we're looking for and look to see where the number fits. Where does it fit in between these two things? Then we'll look one number to the right of the place value. If it's 0 to 4, it stays the same. 5 to 9, we round up. I'm going to show you several examples of this so you can get the idea of what I'm talking about. But first, you need to find that place value. Look one number to the right of that place value. And then you're looking for the number that is there. 0 to 4, the number will stay the same. 5 to 9, you're going to round up. 
Let me show you an example. What is it closer to? I'm going to ask you to round $1.99 to the nearest dollar. You're probably saying that's pretty easy, right? It's about $2. But what does that look like? Well, let's draw a number line. Here I have a number line that has $1 on the left and $2 on the right. Where would $1.99 fit? It fit way over to the right, almost at the $2 mark. And that's why it's closer to $2. That's what rounding is. It's saying, is it closer to the $2 mark or closer to the $1 mark? In this case, it's a pretty obvious example. So now let's take a look uh, at that rule that we talked about, that rule of four or five. If the number is above five, you round up. And I showed that earlier, and you're saying, what number exactly? Well, it's the digit one place to the right of your place value. So let me show you what this looks like in some other examples. If I'm asked to round 126 to the nearest 10, I have to ask myself, what's the nearest 10? Where are the tens? And I identify that the tens are right there. There are two tens. The number two is in the tens column. So I'm rounding to the nearest 10, which means I'm going to decide whether this is closer to 120 or 130. See, the 120 is what it currently is. It's 120 and six more. So it's going to be between 120 or is it closer to 130? Well, look at my number line and see where does it fit. 126 would fit right about there. Notice that that 125 is right in the middle. That's the number we're looking for. That's what we're talking about when we talk about looking at that number. We look at this, the digit just to the right of our place value, and we say if it's a 5 or greater, we're going to round it up. Let's look at another example. Rounding 126.862 to the nearest hundredth. Where's the hundredth? Go ahead and identify that hundredth. Were you able to identify that it's sitting right there? The hundredth is the 6 on the right of the decimal. So what we're rounding between is the hundredth of 6 or the hundredth of 7. And we use the number one place to the right of that, that place value to determine if we're going to round up or round down. Which one is it closer to? 126.862, the 2 makes it closer to the 860 than it is to 870. Just like if it was the, just the number 62, 62 is closer to 60 than it is to 70. It's the same exact principle, only we're working on the right side of the decimal. So we're going to do a little bit more rounding here. Um, let's go ahead and practice with those numbers we looked at before. 359, which would I round that to? 350 or 360? Go ahead and pause the recording at this point and try these four things out. See if you would round them up or down to the numbers indicated. 359, would you round that down to 350 or up to 360? You're rounding to the nearest 10. With this one, 235.2, you're rounding to the nearest 100. Would you go to 200 or 300? 15.1, you're going to round to the nearest 10. Will it be 10 or 20? And then the last one, you're rounding to the nearest 1 or the, the nearest unit. Are you going to round to 102 or 103? Go ahead and pause the recording and try that out. Hi, welcome back. With the first one, we round up. It's closer to 360. With our second one, we're going to round down to 200 because it's closer to 200. In other words, this number here, that 3, is less than 5. All right, we're rounding to the nearest 100, so we're looking at the number one space to the right. It's a 3. We're rounding down. Next one, we're rounding up. Because we're rounding to the nearest 10, we look one digit to the right, which is a 5, and that will tell us that we're rounding up to 20 instead of down to, to 10. And our last one, 
We're rounding to the nearest one, so we would look here at the one and go one digit to the right. That's a four, so we round down. Remember, if that number one digit to the right is four, three, two, one, or zero, if it's less than five, you're going to round down. If it's five or above, then you would round up. All right, one situation question here I'm going to show you. How can you actually use estimating to make your life easier? A car is for sale. It costs $7,999.76. If I have $9,132.48 in my bank account, about how much will I have left if I buy the car? I would personally use some rounding here. Because I don't like all of these numbers, I would say 7,999 is about 8,000. 9,100 something is about 9,000. So when I round those numbers, it makes my life easier. I have 9,000, I'm spending 8,000, that gives me $1,000 left. That's how I would use estimating and rounding to make my life easier. Now, at the end, I can't say I have exactly $1,000 because I rounded and I estimated, but I can say I have about $1,000. So that's what I would do. Quick recap on what we talked about today. We went over place values. We looked at numbers that were inside of ranges. We used that information to help us do rounding and then using those rounded numbers to make estimations. I hope that lesson has been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.